These are the new quantum audio interfaces by Personas, and I'm Reed Stefan, realest puppet in the game. Today we're taking a closer look at everything Personas improved in their quantum lineup for 2024. When choosing an audio interface, the top three things I care about are sound quality, input-output connectivity, and software features. So I'm putting all four devices to the ultimate test to find out how the Quantum ES and Quantum HD stack up in each category. Let's begin with the basics, all the ins and outs of the Quantum ES interfaces. The ES2 features two mic slash line combo inputs, two quarter inch outputs for your monitors, MIDI input and output to control your analog synthesizers, plus a digital aux input that's optimized for modern USB-C devices to easily connect. The front of the ES2 also has an additional instrument input that was designed in collaboration with Fender to sound perfect for direct guitar recording, plus a high quality headphone output that can support even the most demanding open back headphones. Next, the ES4 takes it a step further with twice as many inputs and outputs. You get four mic slash line combo inputs, two stereo outputs for monitors, MIDI in and out, USB-C aux input, and another USB port to connect to your computer, tablet, or mobile device. And on the front, you get two instrument inputs and two separate headphone outputs. All these ins and outs connect to Personas' 24-bit 192K analog to digital converters, which we're gonna be putting to the test later during the listening portion of this video. But if you want to take your inputs, outputs, recording quality, and connectivity to the next level, that's where Personas gives you the Quantum HD series. These feature Personas' signature 32-bit 192K A to Z converters for mastering quality audio and mixing with analog hardware. The HD2 features two mic slash line combo inputs, two stereo outputs, an adapter cable for both MIDI and SPDIF, plus two digital inputs and outputs using optical cable, your USB-C to connect to your computer, plus a dedicated power input to supply electricity to those more robust conversion mechanisms and all the other extra features in the HD series. On the front, you have two instrument inputs and two instrument outputs, which are really uniquely useful for reamping or processing your signals through real guitar pedals without needing any accessories like a reamping box or any high Z conversion devices. This does it for you. The HD2 only features one headphone output, which I kind of wish there was two given the name HD2, but most of the time when I'm working by myself, this is plenty. And finally, the granddaddy flagship model, the HD8, which features just about every type of connectivity you could need in a professional studio environment. We've got eight microphone line combo inputs, five stereo quarter inch outputs, clock sync in and out, an adapter for MIDI and SPDIF, plus more ADAT optical outputs for additional digital device connectivity. On the front, you have the same two instrument outputs and two instrument inputs for reamping and mixing with guitar pedals and two headphone outputs, which is perfect for tracking vocals or project studios. Everybody gets their own independent volume. In addition to having better analog to digital converters, the HD series also has better metering and displays on the interface itself. It shows you more information about your inputs, outputs, audio levels, and things that you might find useful while you're working. I love how the HD8 is rack mountable in your desk and the HD2 sits perfectly on top of your desk with a little bit of opening and clearance underneath for wires to pass through if you need. But those are all the inputs, outputs, and general design differences between the ES and HD series. Let's jump into something they both have in common, which is the PreSonus Universal Control app that gives you access to all of your routing, volume controls, and a few more really handy features. Let's hook up a condenser microphone to my Quantum HD2. Simply click on the device and you're greeted with the mixer page. Now these are a lot of the same buttons that you have on the front of the device, but there's also a lot of controls in here that you can only access through the app. Let's turn on 48 volts phantom power and a low cut, and let's turn up the gain till we get a good level. Check one, two, hello, hello, hello. I'd say about there is good. Or if you're not sure what the perfect level is, you can also press auto gain and simply speak or play your instrument, whatever you're recording for about 10 seconds while it analyzes the input source material and determines the perfect level 58. That's pretty much about where I picked by hand, so it seems to be really accurate. If you're recording a drum or something really loud, there's also an input pad. And if you wanna hear your voice latency-free directly in your headphones without having to monitor through your DAW, which in most cases will add a lot of latency
latency if you have plugins open. This is going to be your low latency direct monitoring system. And while we're here in the settings, we have a few more input and output settings. For example, speaker switching, maybe you have a second pair of monitors set to your extra output and it's not being used for mixing. Another thing I really like is being able to adjust the brightness on the LEDs on the device itself, depending on how dark or bright your environment is. This helps you just match it perfectly. Options for how slow or fast it holds and lets go of the peaks. This enables or disables your digital inputs or outputs. And loopback is really useful if you record tutorials or send your audio output through Zoom or OBS. And then a few more general utility options. And as you can see, it's very simple, straightforward, just routing, volume level, mute buttons, panning, solo, just the basics. This is not the kind of app where you can load up compressors or load up reverbs and delays. Your latency free headphone mix is going to be completely dry. But that doesn't mean that you have to record singing completely dry. Let's say your vocalist likes reverb. You can use your dry signal here from this app and then create a channel here in your DAW. Maybe we'll create two tracks and we'll have one be recording and one be called reverb. And we could just add a simple room reverb. And we're going to keep the mix at 100%. We're going to treat this as if it was an aux, even though it's not. Let's connect our mic. We're using the Quantum HD2. Any buffer size will work for this, but we'll turn it down to 128 for this. All we really need to do is just monitor this channel because we don't want to record the reverb. We could record our dry signal up here and mute this channel because we don't need to hear it. We're already hearing it from the Universal Control app. So whenever I'm recording, this is a workflow that I use a lot of times just to get some reverb going in my headphone mix without actually having to have a low buffer size in your DAW. And now when we press record, we're tracking in a dry vocal, but we hear a nice lush reverb in our headphone mix. And this is a trick that you could do in any DAW with any reverb. Let's say you're tracking a vocal through some analog hardware. Instead of using the XLR part of the combo jack, you would use the quarter inch input of the combo jack. And it automatically detects that a line level device is being connected. So instead of giving you gain, it gives you trim and defaults to zero. And this allows you to bypass the preamps if you're recording through an external analog preamp like I am without unnecessarily going through the preamps again in your interface. Plus, if you need to adjust controls while you're not at the device, you can also use any phone, tablet, or remote computer to access the controls on your interface and make adjustments from anywhere with an internet connection. In the next section of this video, we're going to be putting these inputs and outputs to the test and listening to the nuances and subtle differences between the converters in the ES series and the HD series to hear how these devices sound for recording, mixing, and mastering. I know it's difficult to process, but I gotta let you go. I let you in with the condition that I had all the control. And now you're knocking on my brain and kiss me up all night. I always end up in the gutter when I let you drive. Now I'm stuck in this position and I gotta let you know. Now I'm stuck in this position and I gotta let you know. I know it's difficult to 
a process, but I gotta let you go. I let you in with the condition that I had all the control. And now you're knocking on my brain and kiss me up all night. I always end up in the gutter when I let you drive. Now I'm stuck in this position and I gotta let you know. The overall sound quality is really impressive. The difference between the ES and the HD is noticeable, but that comes down to conversion. They have the same exact microphone preamps, which made the vocal mic test a little bit hard to hear the difference, but where the conversion really started to shine was in the headphone test, the speaker test, and the A to D conversion test, where we used a cable to loop our monitor outputs back into the line inputs. If I had to put my finger on where the converters really sounded different, it wasn't so much in the EQ or tonality, but more so the transients and stereo width of what I was hearing through my speakers and my headphones. The differences you were hearing in the conversion tests are pretty comparable to the differences that I heard with my headphones on and the speakers playing in the room. But those are just my thoughts on what I heard. I'm curious to see what you heard. Let me know in the comments below what differences you noticed. So those are all the listening examples and audio tests for the new Personas Quantum audio interfaces. So in summary, who is each device for? The Quantum ES2 is perfect for anybody who wants to spend the least amount of money and get the highest quality possible. Two mic inputs can cover a wide range of situations from vocal artists, singer songwriters, music producers, beat makers, anybody working completely in the box, and so much more. The larger ES4 also packs a tremendous value, but gives you slightly more inputs for your podcasters, anybody recording instruments that need multiple microphones. They definitely give you more than enough quality to record any idea and get it sounding perfect from the source. The HD series is for the more professional producer or recording engineer who has slightly more demanding work and requires a slightly more pristine sounding set of inputs and outputs to record and mix with. Choosing between the HD2 and the HD8 really comes down to how many inputs do you need and do you want your device to be in a rack or sitting on your desk? Even though these come with a slightly higher price, when you compare them to other devices in their range that give you similar comparable specs, the Quantum HD2 and HD8 are really an incredible deal for a professional sounding audio interface that can handle literally anything in any studio. The ES series obviously have their limitations, but that's what makes them so portable and light and useful as a secondary device or entry level audio interface that sounds phenomenal. If you want to learn more about the Quantum HD or ES series, I'll include links in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time in another video.